Oh, that's very bright. Let me move this a little bit. Hey everybody, Ralph Havens here, and I wanted to do a little video this morning because there's something that I've been thinking about for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and start this here. Let's get a little action here. Here we go. All right, public, Let's go live. <clears throat> Hey everybody, Ralph Havens here. And Sunday morning, we're about to head up to Mount Baker and I just had something um, that was on my mind and I've been thinking about it for a while and so I wanted to share it. Last week I was driving home from work and I work sometimes in Bellingham with people one-on-one um, -on -one, and it's about a 30 minute drive so I was heading out back out to Mount Baker and the Canadian Broadcasting Company had their show on and I was listening and the news came on. And I love, I love that, that news show. And they talked about um, something, about um, the indigenous people in northern Canada. And I guess, you know, there's a group of them that are not doing very well financially and with their health and with all sorts of stuff. And they said that there was this um, type of a flu, but it was actually caused by a bacteria and that it affected about 500 people a year and that 50 of them actually died every year from it. And so they were talking about this and they were talking with this doctor that seemed very, very nice and worked in the public health system in Canada. And he said, um, yeah, it's different than the regular flu because it's not a virus, it's caused by a bacteria. And he said, you know, it's probably caused because of poor living conditions and because of not good food. But then he went on to, this, to say that they had developed this vaccine and they wanted to, that would um, stop this, you know, um, prevent it from happening. And they wanted to test it on the indigenous people in Northern Canada. And at first that sounds kind of cool, like they want to help people, but something struck me where the logic started to break down. And that was that, okay, so this thing is probably solved with good living conditions and with, um, with good food. But then they spent who knows how many millions of dollars, vaccines don't come cheap, um, how many millions of dollars to develop this vaccine. And vaccines always come with a risk, right? So there's, you know, injecting something into a human, there's a risk that there could be some harm. And they wanted to test it on the indigenous people. And so the indigenous people were saying, the tribal leaders were saying, you know, go test it on somebody else before you just kind of use us as guinea pigs. But what I, what I thought was, wow, this doctor in the public health system in Canada was saying that, that um, good living conditions, just good regular living conditions and good food would probably solve this. And then the vaccine was their solution. So over the past years, and more and more lately, I've been seeing that a lot of what I've been told throughout my entire life has just not been true. And so it started, I, I, you know, and we could go into um, this whole victim thing and like, oh man, look at what's happened to us and, and all this stuff. But I want to use it for positive. And, and so that's why I titled this thing, um, Question Everything. Because um, what I found is, what is the, what is the, um, what have we been told that simply is just not true. So when I was, I'm 50, almost 59, you know, I'm going to be 59 in May. And I was born in 1959. And around then, doctors were telling moms that um, breast milk was not as good as formula. Of course, it was the Nestle food company that wanted to sell formula. So they had this whole plan. And they put, you know, um, salespeople in nurses outfits and then went into the hospitals and told the mothers that, you know, new mothers that um, 
this was better for, for the baby because it was scientific, it was clean, it had all the things that they needed. And, and they, um, they, there's a whole generation, me included, that um, didn't get breastfed just because doctors said that's what was, the, what was better. And then, of course, now we found out that, you know, now breast milk is pretty much the perfect thing for a baby. Imagine that. And so it was something that wasn't true. Then um, when I was 12, I had some major problems with my teeth. My whole life I had problems with my teeth until age 37 when I found out some more truth. Well, back in the 1930s, um, Weston Price, a dentist, he was, part, he was the head of the American Dental Association, noticed a pattern. And he noticed that p kids were starting to come out with um, crooked teeth. And they also were coming out with um, behavioral problems and health problems of all sorts and cavities. And he wondered, why are they doing that all of a sudden? So his wife um, was a nurse, and so he was a, a dentist, and they traveled for the next 10 plus years. Every, every, um, every summer, they would go travel somewhere. And they went to the um, Eskimos and the Pacific Islanders and the Ki um, Kenyans, and they went to the Outer Hebrides Islands of Scotland and high in the Alps of, of Switzerland. And they found that all these indigenous cultures were eating different food, of course, but they had a very specific pattern of how to eat that's quite different than the way other people eat now. Most people eat. It's how we eat, though, because we found it. But what he found was when they ate a certain way, they didn't have cavities, they didn't come out with crooked teeth, they didn't have behavioral problems, they didn't have um, all sorts of other mental and, and emotional and, and physical problems, and they did really well. And so the dental system um, was finding a really lucrative thing to have orthodontures and all these cavities were getting filled and it brought a whole industry up and just um, gave dentists something to do. Um, and so they squashed it and kicked him out of the ADA and ridiculed him and, um, and then that happened. So it's like, wow, they knew back then that good food was something that could solve all these problems and yet they chose to hide it. And I say they, is like that, in that case it was the American Dental Association. And so here they are in, in northern um, Canada, and they know that good living conditions and good food would solve this um, food, this, um, this um, supposed flu epidemic, and yet they're choosing to do a vaccine. And so, so when you know, question everything, what is really the truth here? Now, of course, when I was growing up, you know, with all the cavities every six months going to the dentist and getting checked and being told by dentists that, I just had soft teeth and it was my DNA and not to worry, they could always work with me and, and I could pay my bill off over time. Um, I had lots of fillings and of course they were with mercury back then. And now we've come to find out that, well, mercury is pretty much the most toxic non-radioactive thing on the planet. And they somehow thought it was, um, told us that it was something good to put in, a, in somebody's mouth. So yet another thing and that good food could actually solve. So. So what else have we been told that's just not true? Um, back in the 1960s, the sugar industry was getting a lot of bad press because they were, the scientists were finding out that it was a neurotoxin and it was causing lots and lots of problems. And so they actually, the sugar industry won an award for PR and marketing because they convinced people that sugar was good, clean fuel and that the culprit for heart disease and strokes and those sorts of things, which was just starting to happen because sugar was coming into the environment, but um, the, the, um, the culprit was saturated fat from animals. And they, they, lately, the last two or three years ago, I believe it was either JAMA or New England Journal of Medicine came out with, wow, what happened was the sugar industry paid off some, some medical doctors from Harvard to, to completely flip the research and say that sugar was good and that saturated fat was bad. When in actuality, now we've come to find out that high, high fat diets with animals that eat grass, um, those diets are actually protective for heart disease and stroke and diabetes and that sugar is the cause, one of the big causes of inflammation that leads to diabetes, heart disease and stroke. So, so yet another thing that was just told to us as true and now we've come to find out wow high fat diet was actually true sugar wasn't true so so I wanted to leave this um, this Facebook live right now and I'd love to hear your comments about what you found that's just not true and when we hear something where does the logic break down 
like, you know, a doctor, well-meaning it seemed on the CBC, telling us that um, Canadian Indians, Canadian Native American, or, you know, indigenous people, um, First Nation as they're called in Canada, are having this outbreak of a flu thing that's bacterial. I always thought viruses were the cause of flus, but this bacterial infection that's um, affecting 500 indigenous people a year and 50 of them uh, die a year. That's the, the stats that he was quoting. And food, good food and good living conditions could solve it, but we're gonna do a vaccine. The logic seems to break down for me. So there's many more examples of, of what I've, I've found, like you know, fluoride in the water um, to, to, to work with, um, to protect people from cavities. Yet another one that affected me personally, if you know my story. But where it breaks down for me is, okay, fluoride is more toxic than arsenic. If you check the MSDS um, sheet on it, the, the safety sheet on it, it's more toxic than arsenic. And when you think of a, if it's a medical substance, fluoride, supposedly a medical substance, that's going to be given to people with a specific problem, cavities, or the, the possibility that they might have ha cavities. And you think of, okay, a medical intervention, which other medical drug is there no um, control on the dosage? Like everything else, it's like you have a certain problem, here's the drug, take one a day, or take it two times a day, or take it once a week. You know, it's like there's a dosage. And if you give too much of any kind of drug, it can be toxic, even if it's a good drug. And so here's fluoride being added to water, and so there might be some gymnast that's working out very hard, and a little kid that's drinking a lot of water, or a swimmer that's bathed in the water and then drinking a lot of water, because they're working out twice a, like twice a day. And then there's some other um, elderly lady that doesn't drink hardly any water, and then there's a guy that weighs 300 pounds and a kid that weighs 50 pounds, Where's the control for the dosage? And so, so the logic starts to break down, right? Like, and then also the study that was done about fluoride was topical fluoride on the teeth. So, so why is it that we're drinking it? Is that sort of like sunscreen might be good for um, protecting you from the sun rays, so you, but you wouldn't eat this, this, the sunscreen, right? So, there's so many ways that these, this logic just breaks down. And, and it's so easy to take something as true and not question it. Like, you know, I heard a practitioner say at one point um, that, you know, if you have your gut flora ruined early on in life, you know, like a bunch of antibiotics early on, you'll never get it back. And it's like, how do they know that? Like, where does, is that true? Has it ever been not true? You know, just, just um, for, for me, I've been questioning a lot of stuff because up to this point, as I'm getting to this point, I'm, I'm seeing like, has anything, I'm just a questioning, is any, has anything the medical system ever told us been actually true? And so I'd love to hear your comments. Please let me know. I'd love to see that something that's been told to us by the medical system is actually true. You know, so um, a lot of stuff was squashed back in the 1930s or so and, and beyond. Um, and homeopathy and herbal medicine and ancient um, medicines and um, Native American medicines used to be that's how people um, stayed healthy. And in the beginning, the American Medical Association was um, formed because most people were in that kind of mode of healing and didn't trust this um, medical system, this new medical system that was coming out. And so there was a big PR campaign and they, they, um, they really shut down the chiropractic industry for a while until a landmark lawsuit was won by the chiropractors and saying, this is antitrust, you're like doing stuff that's illegal. So, so, um, so anyway, just some thoughts for this Sunday morning. We're about to head up to Mount Baker. Ben's gonna hit the mountains. He's learning how to ski and um, it's a beautiful day. Spring is starting down here in the Pacific Northwest. And I just wanted to, to put this out there this morning and please um, comment, let me know what, what you found um, to be true, to be not true. Things that if you knew back then could have helped you right now. Um, and your thoughts about if, if there's anything that you see that you've been told that's been actually true from the medical system. I'm just curious. 
So, um, so this is Ralph Havens. Everybody have a great Sunday, and I will see you all soon. Let me know what you want to hear about, and I'll be glad to research it for us all. All right. Bye, everybody. Please comment. Let me know what's going on.